From Boise to Middleton, the 5A and 4A Southern Idaho Conferences feature 20 of the largest schools in Idaho. Highlighting the big plays and big stories from Idaho's biggest schools, this is the SIC PrepCast with Wayne DeZubak. That's right. Welcome in. Another edition of the SIC PrepCast here on IdahoSports.com. Brandon Bainey is always joined by Wayne Zubak, the, the school sports calendar is officially over. We crammed as much as we could into that last week, didn't we, Wayne? Yeah, we really did. And I feel like it's graduation week now. I mean, you and I just kind of graduating and, you know, it's kind of like we're all done. You know, it's like senior day. We're just skipping class and doing all kinds of good stuff. So, yeah, we're here just to kind of wrap it up and, you know, had a good time. And, you know, what I, I, I have a hard time believing that the school year has actually come to a close. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, we've got so much spring sports championship stuff to talk about because they jam it all into one week. So let's <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah. Let's let's start with baseball because uh Idahosports.com for the umpteenth year in a row, uh broadcast every single pitch of every single state tournament from five A all the way down to one A. Wayne, you were at the five A state baseball tournament where the SIC dominated. I mean, the final four, all four semifinal teams all came from district three. Yeah, we had Mountain View and Hawaii in one semifinal, Rocky Mountain and Timberline in the other. And you're right, it came down to Hawaii and Rocky Mountain going after it. I mean, that upstart first year school that kind of surprised the basketball world doing likewise in baseball. It was unbelievable. But we were out at Wolf Field and uh, Troy Rice was the tournament director there, did a great job. And, and we had great treatment there. And uh I tell you what, it was a, a great facility. It's an all turf field except for the outfield. The outfield's regular grass, and the turf is the infield. I mean, even the pitcher's mound is covered with turf. It looks like dirt because it's orange or kind of a brown, but you know what? It, it was all turf, and it was really wild. But it was a fun tournament, and you're right. I mean, and even Bora got into the act. I mean, they were they were kind of in that uh, consolation game, so it was just wild. Uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, Bora lost to Lewiston in the consolation final. Cruz Hepper and hit a walk-off home run uh, for for the Bengals. You know uh, what's funny about that, Brandon, is that you know it's going to the bottom of the tenth, and of course you now you're into the tenth thing and you're going wow, wow, wow. And before you even get to mention Cruz Hepper and getting up to bat, he took the first pitch and put it over the left field wall, and it was gone in a heartbeat. And it was like, okay, <laughs> game over. It ended that quickly after going 10 innings. So it was kind of funny, but yeah. And it was, you know, Bora did a good job. I mean, they made it through that uh, play in game by beating Coeur d'Alene up there, you know, in extra innings. Um, I guess I ironic that they would lose that uh, consolation game in extra innings. So, yeah. And, and if you had asked me going in to rank the, the four teams, I thought would be in the final four for baseball, I would have said Timberline one. I would have taken Timberline with my first pick then Mountain View, then Rocky, and then Lewiston. I really liked Lewiston. Yeah. And so for a Waihee to come through, I'll admit, I I really underestimated what the Storm could do. What did they do well enough to, to string three in a row and win the title? You know, they played team ball. That's all they did. They, they, they played team ball, and they hung in there. I mean, they were down, they were down to Lewiston, came back, won that game 6-4 to four, uh, on Thursday, and then just kept going. You know, I mean, the big one was the win over uh, – Mountain View, the number one team in the state at the time, the number one seed. It was a 2-1 ball game. Uh, I really believe that it led to Mountain View's downfall against Timberline in the uh, third place game where they lost that game 10-1 to because that was just an absolutely emotional loss for Mountain View. Uh, it was just something else. But, I mean, they just got her done. And uh, why he always came up, I think the best way to do it is just a kind of a, a dumb feeling, but they just believed. And they believed in themselves and they had that feeling and just no matter what the situation was. Plus what they did was they kept everything close. They were always in the game so that a base hit here, you know, something here, a walk here would get them right back where they had scores on base and they could make something happen. And they did. That's exactly what they did against Mountain View in the semifinals. And Mountain View picked a really bad time to go cold offensively. They scored one run in, in each of their games. Now they yeah. won the first one, one nothing, but then they, yeah, they really struggled to get the offense going. It looked like for Mountain well, you're, View. You're right. Mountain View played eight seeded Idaho Falls. And to the Tigers' credit, they gave them all they could handle and one nothing. And it was a weird, weird run that was scored because the only run that was scored was scored by a guy who struck out. 
but because the catcher missed the ball, he ran to first, got on to second by a fielder's choice, then was balked over to third, and then came home on a fielder's choice. So that's how they scored the one run that beat Idaho Falls. And if you're Idaho Falls, you're still going, how'd we lose that game? Yeah, that was a while. When I saw that, I was like, oh man, something wild happened there for sure. So, yeah. um, so congratulations to Hawaii state baseball champs in their first year of existence. Uh, meanwhile, at the 4A state baseball tournament, we, we knew that those three teams from the SIC, Middleton, Bishop Kelly, Columbia, were all going to be there. Uh, they all three got to the semifinals. And Bishop Kelly and Middleton each had really tough semifinal matchups where Twin Falls knocked out Middleton two to one and Bishop Kelly, you know, held off a feisty Columbia team five to four. And then we got to the championship and it was kind of anticlimactic, right? Bishop Kelly blows out Twin Falls 15, nothing. So the Knights, once again, your four a baseball champs. Yeah. And that doesn't surprise me for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, they're so good. They did it all year. They just won big games all year long. But also they had, just because of the luck of the draw, they got to play in their home field. And I think that, you know, is always a disadvantage. You're at home. You feel comfortable there. You know the field. You know what's going on. And just one of those things where they qualify for state. And this year they were actually hosting the state. And so I think that all helps. It didn't get them the win. But it doesn't hurt when you're, you're playing at home and feel comfortable about it. But, yeah, you're right. Columbia also, I thought, had a great season. Milton, one of those seasons where I thought Milton probably could have uh, done better than what they ended up doing. But you know what? Hand it to Bishop Kelly. And especially in the championship game, they made no doubt 15 0. Done deal. We're out of here. Yep. And Middleton did beat Columbia in that third yep. place game. But again, it was close 5 4. So Columbia's yep. like, man, yep. what? It was just a dogfight the whole 4 A season. I mean, it really was, especially in the SIC. And, and Columbia had won districts the week prior. So Middleton and BK getting a little revenge over Columbia there. Absolutely. Uh, state softball happened last week as well. And at the 5A level, uh, why he first year program was in the mix. They, they beat the favorite sky uh, Skyview yeah. on Friday night, 10 to nine. And from there, the Hawks had to battle back and, and double back and beat a why he twice on Saturday to win the championship. And by God, if the Hawks didn't do it, Second title in a row. I can't say enough about Skyview. I can't say enough about Owyhee. I mean, their baseball program wins it. Their basketball program won it. Owyhee. Skyview was the number one team. They're undefeated for like all season long until the very end when they lost the game. And I thought that may have been good for them going into the uh, state tournament to have actually felt defeat. And, you know, sometimes when you feel that defeat, you come back a little bit stronger. But bottom line is that they did a good job. Uh, Skyview did a coming back. I was laughing about it. I said, how can you say that Skyview came out of the loser's bracket when they were the number one undefeated team for 99% of the year? Yeah. And they were really standing on the edge of goodbye because they lost 10 to nine and then they come back through and they beat uh, on Saturday. They had to beat Eagle 13 to 11. Yep. Timberline five to four, and then they had a pair of one run wins over Hawaii four to three and five to four. So they were all really tight nail biters all yeah. the way through, too. Well, like you said, they could see goodbye from their back porch. So they were just sitting there going, Oh, <laughs> this is too close for comfort. But you know what? That's what state tournaments all about. I mean, the old adage that that's why they play the game. You know, you don't email them in, you play the game. And you never know what's going to happen. I mean, we would have never, I would have never in a million years picked a Waihee to win the, the 5A baseball championship. I figured they'd do well, but not to go all the way with what the power that they had there with the other teams that you've mentioned, we've mentioned. But, you know, and Skyview, I mean, I would have thought that they were the pick, but when I had to see they had to come through the loser bracket and then play an in, if necessary game, I mean, they, they went the whole route. I mean, they took the long way home. They earned it, that's for sure. 4A softball had no drama, Wayne. Bishop yeah. Kelly just dominant throughout um, they beat Valley View earlier in the tournament, 12 to nine. That was their closest game by far. Valley View then battled back to get back to the championship. And BK said, all right, we've had enough 23 to one. The Knights roll to the title. Well, there may have been a mercy rule there, but they showed no mercy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, BK just getting it done. And again, you know, I've said it before. When you look at the programs and you see what they've done, uh, baseball, softball, BK just got a great program going on the 4A level, and they're always there. They're always a competitor. I mean, spoiler alert, we're going to get to all the other sports, but we might as well call this the Bishop Kelly episode because they 
they cleaned house here at the spring sports championships. Yeah, yeah they uh, did. Oh, we're going to get to golf in a minute. And, yeah, well, let's, you know, let's. They're over par there. I mean, they're under par, but they're over par because they're so good. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's talk about boys golf. This actually took place like on Monday and Tuesday, kind of okay. earlier in the week. Uh, the five A uh, golf t- title on the boys side was won by Boise High. Eagle ends up taking second. And uh, Boise also had the the individual champion. In fact, they have the top two finishers, uh, Reed Pyron and Will Strong. Both shot 71 on the first day, Wayne. Then on day two, Pyron shoots a 72, Strong shoots a 73. How about a little competition between the top two golfers for Boise High? You know what's so cool is that when you have that competition there, it takes your mind off the overall picture. You're just looking at your buddy, and you know you two guys are going to bring it home, and you're just going after each other, and it kind of makes it fun. You know, you're competing against your buddy, your teammate, uh, and you know it's all for the good of the, of the team. And so I'm just I, – I think that's great. I think, you know, the two of them just going after each other and got it down to one stroke. That had to make it fun for them to uh, compete at State. Yeah, so congrats to Boise High, your, your 5A boys golf champs, your 4A boys golf champs. It's a tie, Wayne. Bishop yeah. Kelly and Twin Falls end up tying. They each shot 652 as a team. Have you ever seen this before, where, where two golf teams tied for the team title? You know, I've never seen it where it ended that way. It's funny they didn't play like an extra hole or something, you know, for all the guys or one thing, something like that, see if they could break the tie. But I'm glad it ended in a tie. When you got a team like that, you're going after it and you're – you're fighting hard and you end up each with 652 for a team score. You know what? Just let it go and, and have it there. But, you know, every once in a while we try to have that that extra hole, the 19th hole. Well, I don't think they're talking about that when they say the 19th hole. But <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely something different. And but we'll we hold- are, but we are. That's where we're headed after this prep cast. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, uh, Middleton took third overall at 661. They had the individual medalist, uh, Curtis Seidel, shot at 147. And uh, Bobby Kincaid of Nampa finished third, only four strokes behind Seidel. So a, a nice representative for Nampa High there as well, and Bobby Kincaid. Absolutely. I just I think that's great. And I think that's, you know, a super, super job by those guys. Well, girls golf uh, was dominated at the 5A level by the SIC. The top four teams all came from District 3. Rocky Mountain is your 5A girls golf title winner. Boise second, Eagle third, Mountain View fourth, and Rocky. Also, you know, a lot of times these teams that win have the top individual as well. Lauren Parrish of Rocky wins the individual title by three strokes over Maddie Montoya of Bora. And Eagles' Brooke Patterson takes third. So not only did they go one, two, three in the team titles, but the SIC goes one, two, three in the individual portion as well. You know, it was interesting all week long. Uh, Maddie Montoya got a lot of press in the paper. They did the picture of her. And, of course, I think sometimes that's like the Sports Illustrated cover, Kiss of Death. Uh, for for Maddie, but she was there, and you know. But Lauren Parrish for Rocky just stepped up, said, "Hey, I'm going to play the game I play. I'm going to, I'm not going to beat myself." And she got it done and won by three strokes, which is a pretty good margin, you know. When you get down to the state, and you're playing somebody as good as Montoya has been for her her entire career. Let's move on to tennis, where at the five A level for for girls tennis, this is the most dominant showing I've seen in a while. Boise wins the the five A girls tennis title with 72 points. Timberline took second with 37. So, I mean, this was a runaway for the Brave. You know, and it was an upset, too. I mean, you know, for the girls, it really took an upset right off the get-go. So they just played tough, you know, with Tessa Staley just kind of coming up with that upset there over the top-ranked Avery Hopke. Uh, Hopke out of Timberline was supposed to win it all and won the first set, 6-3, and then all of a sudden Staley just turned it around. Yeah, Hopke had beaten Staley just a week prior at, at, at the yeah. district uh, invite. So, yeah, Hopke was a big favorite going in, but way to go. Tessa Staley uh, winning the girls' singles title on the doubles side. Uh, Katie Turk, Caroline Turk, uh, win over Thunder Ridge's duo of Journey Hartman and, and Ashley Priest. So congrats to the the uh, brave duo there as well. Five I like, a- doubles. I like doubles. I was going to say one thing. I, loved, I think doubles is maybe one of the most fun sports to watch, especially in tennis. It's just unbelievable. I mean – it's just like so there's always something going on there's always a good point something happened and it's fun so i just wanted to throw that in there i like that well and the only thing better than doubles is mixed doubles right yeah there you go there you go boise's (laughs) yeah boise's mixed doubles team sasha marsh and luke neely also won the mixed doubles title over rocky mountains taylor parsley and indiana red so way to go 
there as well. So Rocky Mountain on the boys' side, though, they did quite well for themselves. They they win the 5A Boys Tennis Championship, uh, Boise and Centennial, each uh, tie for second. Uh, Tyler Dalos of Centennial is your singles title winner, uh, 6264 over Dylan Gomez of Lewiston. And then uh, another top seeded doubles team goes down here. Carson O'Hara and Dylan Maud of Rocky were the top seed, but they lose to Shane Garner and Evan Walter of Eagle. Uh, and just like that singles match we were talking about on the girls' side, uh, the favorites took a 6 3 win in the first set, but then lose 6 4 6 4. Yeah, I tell you what, I got a shout out to the Tennis guys because it's so funny. We, we talked when we started this cast today. Well, they did everything this week or last week. They put it all into a weekend or a couple of days. Anyway, bottom line, tennis is kind of over here. And like today in the newspaper, I finally saw stories about tennis. You know, it was finally out there. So, I mean, you're kind of doing it almost on your own. You're doing your own thing. And I just got to, you know, shout out to those tennis guys because they're out there working hard, doing their thing, winning championships. And uh, I, I really got to hand it to them. And I will say on our site, idahosports.com, uh, we have a nice recap of everything that happened from state tennis. We we published that uh, yesterday morning. It was written by Sean Kane, who's a broadcaster for us at idahosports.com, but he's also the tennis coach at Century High School in Pocatello. So he knows the game. Uh, he's won eight state titles in his in his coaching career. And so he, he wrote a really nice recap of everything that happened, 5A all the way down to 3A. It's right on the homepage at idahosports.com. So go check that out for sure for all your tennis action. Yep. Um, 4A tennis. Bishop Kelly girls run away with the title, uh, 56 points. Hillcrest was second with 20. So kind of like we saw with the Boise girls, BK runs away with it. Miranda Austin was the heavy favorite in singles play. And, uh, she won over her BK teammate, Addison Sihar in the final and poor CR didn't even score a point. Austin shut her out six, zero, six, zero. I don't know. You can see that coming though. You probably knew something was going to happen, but here's the deal. You know, it was a dominating performance by BK overall as a team. And so you get the top two or meeting for the championship. And, uh, be, you know, 6 0 6 0, that's pretty impressive uh, win right there. So, again, we talk about BK, we talk about esport that they're involved in, whether it's football, basketball, whether it's track and field or whatever it may be, softball, and now tennis. We can see that they're rocking it right there. Definitely. Well, Ridgeview's boys had the best finish at the 4A tennis meet. Wood River actually won the championship uh, first and to third place was only separated by, by five points total. So Ridgeview took second overall. They had the singles champion in Noah Nielsen. And a big shout out to Middleton as well. They had the uh, the mixed doubles champion pairing of Lily Summers and Jordan Malcolm. They defeated Valley View's Caroline Meacham and, and Jaden Bergquist. So nicely done there as well. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, the tennis guy's getting it done. And it's nice if you can't win a state championship as a team, to have a state champion like you did at Middleton, you know, in the mixed doubles. Definitely. All right. Track and field, Wayne, where this was, I mean, records fell by the wayside, uh, you know, up and down the meet. Um, let's start with the 5A girls where Boise uh, successfully defends their title. I think we all knew kind of coming in that Boise was going to be the favorite. 121 points. Timberline takes second with 90, but boy, Boise's got so many great, phenomenal athletes, especially in those distance races, it seems like. Yeah, they really do. I mean, and we knew they were loaded coming in, Boise was. We've talked about it all season long, what they do. But I mean, they also got some big wins by Logan Smith in the 800 meter, you know, so she did a great job there. Uh, had a personal record in that. Uh, she ran on the championship 4 by 400 meter relay team. Uh, they had a champion 4 by 800 meter relay team. So they had some distance runners, but they also just simply got the job done everywhere you look, you know, in the sprints as well. Yeah, and uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but um, that record that Logan Smith, that PR that Logan Smith set in the 800 is also a new uh, state meet record yeah. for the 5A. She broke uh, former Boise runner Maggie. Is it Leibich? Leibich. I never know how to say it. Uh, uh, her, you said it both ways, so either way. I'm, I'm covered, those, right? Right, you're covered. The The record was set in 2018, and, and Logan Smith broke it there. Um, so, and and this was, you know, not a full-strength Boise team either. Samantha Smith opted out. Uh, she sat out uh, because she had some injuries, and, you know, Allie Bruce uh, was coming off of an illness, and so for Boise to still win despite having, you know, not their full lineup was also very impressive. Timberline took second, mostly behind the exploits of Lauren McCall. She won the 400, the 300 hurdles. She also ran a leg on Timberline's 4 by 100 meter relay team that, that won the title. 
uh, Avery Navis to Ella Bo- uh, Boson, uh, Bryn Solani, and Lauren McCall. And then that same quartet went out and won the, the 4 by 200 meter relay as well. And then uh, yep. Ashlyn Sandow of Timberline won the triple jump. So a nice showing from the Timberline girls, I thought, to take second. Absolutely. Lauren McCall, four, count them, four gold medals involved in those relays. But I watched her play a lot of basketball. I did a lot of uh, Timberline basketball games this year and I watched her. And she's a good athlete. Does not surprise me that she was involved in four gold medal performances. Not the only four gold performer. We'll get to the other one here in just a little bit. Uh, uh, other champions from the 5A girls meet uh, Gracie Strickland of Capital won the shot put and uh, Eva Lauder of Centennial won the pole vault. And in the process, she set a new meet record yep. um, as well. It, it was funny earlier in the day at the 4A p- part of the competition, Tatum Richards of Emmett won the 4A pole vault and she had set a new state record. And then like an hour later, Eva Lauder comes out for Centennial to 5A and she yeah. she bests yeah. Richards, Mark. So yeah. it was pretty well, fun to watch. I- and I don't know if you if you mentioned Ashlyn Sandow of Timberline yeah. won that uh, triple jump. Uh, I didn't. I can't remember. We talked about her. She went thirty six six. So she also won there. So good job for Ashlyn. Yeah, that was uh, an awesome performance as well. Five A boys side, kind of like with the boys to girls. We kind of knew coming in Rocky Mountain was going to be the favorite. They win the title at 105 points, but Boise wasn't that far off. You know, they finished second at 92. They they gave them a good challenge. Yeah, I think Rocky, I could be wrong because uh, there's so much going on, but I think it's like five years in a row Rocky has won the boys. I mean, they have just dominated. They've done a great job. And uh, as you said, going in, we knew they were going to do it. Uh, a lot of that because they had some good distance runner, Tyler Sainsbury at Rocky Mountain. He had had the 1,600-meter best time all year long, and he didn't run his best time. He ran a 4.14.60. His best time, I think it's 4.13 something, uh, which is the best in the state. But he finished numero uno, and it doesn't matter what your time is as long as you finish in front of everybody else. That's right. Sainsbury won the 1600. Trent Wygod won the 3200. Yeah. And then uh, Rocky Mountain came out and won uh, the four by 100 meter relay with Justin Charter, Cade Thompson, Isaac Thayer, and Hunter Stecker. And they also won the four by 800 meter relay. 5A is the only one that does this, the four by 800. This is an insane event to me. Cade and Tupper, a- uh, Aiden Stevenson, Cole Reed, and Sainsbury. Uh, won that as well. So you know that 800 is the most grueling race I think there is. I mean, more so than the 1600 meter or the 3200 meter because you can pace yourself. I mean, I can't pace myself like those guys do, but you can pace yourself. But in the 800 meter anymore, it's become a full out sprint for 800 meters. I mean, and so that really will tucker you out. But yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun event. Definitely. And Boise showed up as well, took second overall. Mason Lawyer wins the 100 in 1046. That's a PR for him. He yeah. Won the, yeah, he's been good all year long. We knew he would do something. Yeah. Uh, Liam Murray is committed to Dartmouth. He's going to go run for the big green in well, the see, Ivy he's League. He's smart too. How about that? Yeah. I mean, not only is he fast, but he's smart. Now that, that impresses me. Yeah. And uh, he won, or, yeah. Uh, so Mason Lawyer of Boise won the 100 meter dash. I misspoke. Liam Murray of Boise is going is going to compete at Dartmouth, and he won the 400 meter dash. His right. time of his time of 47:50 is a new state record, and that's booking it in the 400. 47:50 for for Liam Murray. Yeah, he should have gotten a speeding ticket there. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, Porter Caulfield won the 300 meter hurdles as well, and then Boise won the four by 200 meter relay and the four by 400 meter relay. Uh, Mason Lawyer, Liam Murray, Porter Caulfield ran on both of those relay teams. Cooper Smith ran in the shorter one, and Tucker Briggs was the anchor in the 4 by 4 So uh, Boise doing well on the track. In the field as well, Seth Nelson won the pole vault. Um, and then other uh, champions from the 5A boys meet. Uh, Seth Nelson of Boise won the pole vault, like we said. Caleb Woodland of Meridian won the 110 hurdles. Eli Lawrence, three-time winner in the triple jump. Clearing 49 yeah. feet. Six story about Eli. Yeah. Eli misplaced his cleats. He didn't know where they were. He was looking for me. He didn't even warm up in that. Uh, yeah, he didn't even warm up in the triple jump. He's like, uh, where do I put my cleats? And he's looking around for me. He finally found him just in time to jump. So, and it didn't bother him. And no warm ups, no nothing. He goes, I can do this. And he did. Yeah. He, he still has a top 10 mark in the nation this year yes. for triple yeah. jump. Yeah. It's I don't crazy. need no stinking warm ups. <laughs> that's that's awesome that's oh that's cool i see this is only the kind of stuff you're going to find out by tuning into the prep cast that's, there you go there you go good, good nugget wayne 
All right. So yeah, Eli Lawrence wins the triple jump three time state champ in that event. Jackson Beck of Mountain View wins the shot put. Deontay Cobb of Mountain View wins the high jump. And Brandon Stewart of Eagle uh, ends up winning the discus. So a lot of individual champs at that 5A meet on the boys' side. Yeah, absolutely. But again, congratulations to Rocky once again getting it done. All right. The 4A boys state track and field meet. There were really two stories going on, a team story and an individual story. The team story is Bishop Kelly runs away with it, 132 points, really led by their sprinter. He's he's going to run for the University of Arizona in the Pac-12 next year, James Onanabosi. He wins the 100, the 200. He also was the anchor on the 4 by one relay, uh, along with Cam Davis, Cole Miller, and Cormac Mullen. Um, Patrick Monahan of Bishop Kelly wins the high jump. Cole Miller wins the triple jump. And because of their depth along with those individual winners. BK really just piled up the points and ran away from everybody. Yeah, they're good. I mean, when you got Ananabosi running like he does and stuff like that, and the guy headed to Arizona, you know when he's big time Pac-12 like that, that he's got some talent. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Definitely. And then the individual story from the 4A meet was Landon Helms of Emmett. We've talked about him this year on the prep cast. He's headed to Texas A&M to compete in the SEC that's in track and field. stuff, man. Yeah, that's that's really cool for, for Idaho to have so many high caliber, high octane track. Absolutely. And Talking, even, even with the Dartmouth thing, you know, I mean, you think about the kids from, I mean, they're getting noticed nationwide. Yeah, they're really putting Idaho on the map. That's for sure. Um, Landon Helms of Emmett. Also a four gold winner, winner like uh, Lauren McCall from Timberline. Yeah. He he won the one ten hurdles, set a new state record at thirteen sixty nine. I can't even wrap my head around that. Uh, he also won the three hundred hurdles, the long jump, and the pole vault. So a four uh, event winner for Landon Helms of Emmett. He really went out in style. See, he should be in, in the decathlon. He would have won the whole thing. Right. I mean, I think yeah. he's got that kind of talent, you know, to be in a decathlon. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he won three consecutive state titles in the 110 hurdles and pole vault. First athlete to do that since uh, Eagles Donovan Kilmartin in 2000. Oh, Kilmartin was so good. That's that's impressive, man. Yeah, that's that's Kilmartin was an icon in in that event. Yeah, there, I mean that is rarefied air. And his 1369 um, we talked about was a new state record, state meet record in the, in the 110 hurdles. Uh, the record previously was set all the way back in 1985 by Darren Harris from Capitol High. So that was a long standing record yeah. that fell. Yep. It's incredible. Yep. So Landon Helms continuing to do Landon Helms types things. Um, uh, Patsy Franks of Middleton wins the discus, and Nampa wins the four by 200 meter relay with Trace Higgins, James Storrs, Keen, Tegan Lords, and Joshua Peterson as well. So a lot of good 4A boys performances. On the 4A girls side, um, there wasn't a ton to talk about in terms of the, the team race, but let's talk about uh, individuals. Bishop Kelly had a double winner in, in Jacoba Lute, and uh, she won the shot put and discus. We thought that would be the case coming in. Um, Isis Villafane of Ridgeview wins the 400. Tatum Richards, we talked about from Emmett, won the pole vault, set a new state record that lasted for about an hour until the girl from Centennial went. And then Cassidy Freed of Middleton wins the triple jump as well. Yeah, Cassidy Freed, again, watched her a lot a couple of years ago in uh, basketball, does a good job. Jacoba from Bishop Kelly, she has been the leader all year long in both the shot and the discus, and nobody was going to catch her. All she had to do was show up for state and do what she does, and she did, and she got them done for Bishop Kelly. Yeah, just uh, another great performance from Bishop Kelly, right? I mean, this oh, yeah. was their spring. It was really their school year. They, they went to state. I think in just about every tournament there was yeah. basketball. And, I know they were there football. They were there. Yeah. All the way through. Yeah. It was just a tremendous spring uh, overall in the uh, treasure Valley. And especially with those five, a four, a schools. So Wayne, uh, the end of the school year is upon us. I can't believe we hit the finish line. No, I can't either. Like I said, it just, you know, you start talking about it in football. You go, okay, here we go. Football. I can't believe football's here. And now we're going, wait a minute. It's all done. We're all done. Now we got, you know, three or four months just kind of hang out and be cool. Yeah. Well, and speaking of hanging out and being cool, you're going to be uh, making a pretty big life change here, Wayne. I feel okay talking about this because it's Facebook official. I saw you put oh it out on, on Facebook. Is that, is that what it does? Make it official on Facebook? That's, that's right. <laughs> so, so, Wayne, you, uh, you and your wife are, are going to be moving across the country. 
Yeah, we've always liked uh, the New Bern, North Carolina area. And we, you know, we've been here for 40 years in the Valley, came here in 1982, worked for Channel 6, KIVI, and then Channel 2, uh, KBCI, now KBOI for a long time, about 15 years of both places. And so we've been here and then radio for the last 10 years and, and just kind of been doing some part-time gigs here and there. And we just kind of decided it was time to have an adventure. You know, it's kind of like going to Disneyland, mom and dad only. And uh, we just thought we'd like it. So we've always enjoyed that area uh, on the coast. It's about 30 miles from the Outer Banks. It's uh, uh, kind of a fun place. It's on the Noose and the Trent Rivers. And, and we were able to get an acre of land down there, mostly wooded and nice home. Looking forward to it. And hey, it's just something different. So something as you have different stages in your life. And this is a chapter, you know, that we want to go to and, and have a little fun and explore a new world and try something different. So it's it's fun. I mean, it's a hard decision to make. It's nothing you make easily. But at the same time, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess I read the other day, I was feeling bad about it. I read something and I'm not saying I'm successful, but it says successful people embrace change. And, uh, you know, and that's kind of where I'm wanting to go. So we'll see what happens. So. Yeah. Well, uh, congratulations on everything you've accomplished in Idaho. I know you're not going to be a complete stranger. You'll come back and visit every uh, once in a while, but we, we want to wish you the best as well on your new chapter in North Carolina. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it, except, you know, I'm looking for, I just found out today that I can't get a mover because they're all put up till the end of July. So it looks like I'm going to have to go the route. I didn't want to go. I'm going to be a truck driver, uh, get me a big old U-Haul. And drive it across Kansas. We'll see what happens, you know. You know, maybe you reach out to Dane Roy and see since Hawaii he's got pretty much his freshmen and sophomores and everything, you know, build that muscle up. See if those young men want to come help you load up the, the moving van. Moving yeah. Truck. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, we'll get somebody. There's always somebody. I, I'm just going to sit back. I have already decided that I will be the supervisor of any moving uh, furniture. So I'm a moving, moving furniture supervisor is what I am. There you go. Well, uh we certainly appreciate everything you've given to IdahoSports.com over the past couple of seasons as well. We don't we don't get uh, play-by-play talents like you very often. You were very overqualified to do what you did for oh, IdahoSports.com. No, so no, I was, I, I'm still going to hang around. If Paul will have me, I still want to sit there and uh, through the computer because nobody knows where you are on the computer. I mean, you know, and so I'm hoping to just continue to sell our power booster banners and things like that, and, and talk to folks here in Idaho and just maintain the relationships I have and we'll come back. I still have family here and we'll come back and visit, but I'm just looking forward to it. It'd be a lot of fun. And I love idosports.com. It's a great place to work. Great place, great people. And you guys all do a super job. So I appreciate, I appreciate the kudos you've given me. That's just because I'm leaving. You wouldn't be talking nice if I wasn't leaving. <laughs> That's right. Hey, can you believe that bum went to North Carolina? No, yeah, exactly. Kidding. There you go. Now we're <laughs> talking. Now we're talking. Now we're back down to that normal level. Yeah. So now I feel now I feel much better, much more comfortable. For sure. Well, thanks to everybody who tuned in to the SIC Prepcast all season long. This is going to be our last one of the, of the of this school year. Now that everything's kind of finished up and and Wayne's moving on and and we'll move into the summer season here and so uh, again, Wayne, big thanks for doing this every week as well. We we did like 40 plus episodes over yeah, the course of the school year. Well, I can't do it without you, Brandon. I mean, you can he gives me some cheater notes all the time, so it really makes it easy to do. I just have to sit here and and try to figure out not to screw up. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done sometimes. I can attest well, that, to that. For so. me especially, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, big thanks to everybody who tuned into the SIC Prepcast all season long. One final time for Wayne to zoo back. I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for watching watching and or listening on idahosports.com.